Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Ordnance Lab. I'm Sean and today we're going to be talking about flashbangs, also known as noise flash distraction devices, NFDDs, and sting balls. Now to make sure we're up front with y'all, through our alternate operation, the Macaulay Group, it's a defense and law enforcement operation, we are at Amtech Less Lethal ALS distributor, um, and we're mostly going to be focusing on ALS products here. So we are trying to sell ALS products to make sure that, again, we're being up front with y'all about what our commercial interests are, but we also want to make sure to thank our sponsor, Global Ordnance. If you look down to the comment section, you'll be able to see a link there to um, where you can go to them. If you patronize them, you'll be able to be supporting us. So make sure to check them out. Now, NFDDs and flashbangs, are, let's not uh, hide it. These right here are very dangerous items. However, just like firearms or anything else, they can be employed in a uh, risk reduction measure whenever you're using them. So if you're a police department or whatever, you're looking to get into a NFDD program, make sure that you understand that these right here can cause fires, they can cause injuries, they can cause all kinds of things that um, are bad for y'all and will get y'all sued if you're not employing them with the proper training. That's why we make sure, no matter who you're gonna be doing business with for your less lethal product, Products, make sure that you get proper training and all of your um, operators are going to know what these the capabilities and limitations of these weapon platforms are. Now we're going to talk about a variety of different types of bangs or NFDDs um, here. We're going to start off with the reusable type. What this right here is, this is the ALS-09, which is one of my, um, I think is one of the better reusable bangs in the market. What it has, it has a reusable hole here that's good for 40 bangs. And then here's the actual bang itself. It's got about five grams of flash powder in here. And so we'll be throwing this one and measuring it with a decibel meter to show what the relative noise is. Now, here's one of the ones I really like is the single use bangs. One of the advantages of these is um, it's made out of purely cardboard. And this is one of the advantages of the ALS product compared to some of the other ones on the market because after it's set off, all you have left is a cardboard tube that there really isn't much of a throwback potential compared to this metal one. If you throw this into like a prison yard or whatever, you're gonna get this thrown right back at you versus if you just get a little bit of cardboard thrown back at you. Um, and again, this is one of the advantages of the ALS products where um, I've looked at some of the other offerings and they're really not able to compete with the ALS ones. And this right here is a single use bang. Now here's a multi-use bang. This right here is a great product. What it does is whenever it sets off, it kicks off seven sub munitions, which will all detonate independently. However, as you'll be able to see in the video, this right here <laughs> poses an extreme fire hazard. And so again, this right here goes back to whoever's employing these weapons needs to really understand what its capabilities and limitations are. If you throw something like this into a building, you're most likely to have a Waco type outcome. Um, here's some non-traditional bangs. These right here are known as blast strips, and these right here are intended typically for cell extractions. You can slide them underneath a cell door to set them off, or in a residential door, you can slide them underneath. You can also use them for very light blasting. They'll, uh, I'm sorry, breaching. They'll be able to work to open up a, uh, a light residential door that's locked. What you can do is you can take these right here, slip them in here with a uh, IV bag, slap that on the front of the door, tape it on there and hit it. And that right there will often be able to open up, again, light residential doors. We've got a door that will demonstrate that, which will show you how it's done. But again, this is not something you're gonna be breaching open bank vaults or anything. And then finally, we're gonna be going here with the ALS um, sting ball grenades. These right here are, are typically used for riot control, crowd control, things like that, cell extractions. What's really neat about the ALS products that I really like about it is that the head will actually pop off a second before the thing detonates. Because what happens, whenever it detonates, it sends little rubber balls that are in here all over the place. But if you've got this fuse head on there and that right there goes flying off, you've got a potential to turn it into a legit fragmentation grenade and so again with this right here popping off a second before that lowers the risks of causing fatal injuries or anything so anyways let's get on there and start banging away all right so first up is going to be the ALS 09 the reusable bang now we're going to be employing it is you want to make sure whenever you're employing it that you're doing it in a controlled manner you don't want to just go throw it into a room because you have no idea where it's going to go so what we're going to do is we're going to do the inverse roll with it I'll show you all that here all right fire in the hole All right, so even after it's gone off, it's gonna be rather warm to the touch. And this is all that's left of just a fuse head assembly. Everything else is blown up. And so now what we'll do is we'll file paperwork with ATF, tell them we blew this one up and take it off the registry. So let's try it now with one of the single use bangs. All right, so we're gonna use now, it's gonna be the single use bang. Um, this is just a single banger. And one thing I forgot to mention before is whenever you're using these right here, make sure you're wearing your eye pro, ear pro gloves, and also having a means to fight fires. These right here will start fires if you're not careful and you have to always be ready for it. So, let's see what happens. Fire the hole. Well, 
Well, that right there was a hell of a bang. So here's all that's left of the cartridge. You can see this right here is really lightweight. And when you compare it to the multi-use one, where you have this big metal chunk that if you're employing this in a crowd control or prison riot kind of situation where you're gonna get that throwback, uh, getting hit getting hit by this really doesn't feel very good compared to getting hit by this little cardboard thing. And this is one of the advantages of the ALS products where again, for certain niche applications like crowd control or riot control in a prison situation, this right here um, is a better weapon than some of the other offerings on the market. So now what we'll do is we'll move on to the multi-bang. All right, so next up is going to be the multi-bang. This one right here is going to kick off seven submunitions that are really cool to watch, but it is an insane fire hazard. So, fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. All right, that right there was a hell of a bang. It sent crap flying everywhere. There was uh, clouds of smoke and everything. What it did is it kicked off the base part right here and kicked out those submunitions and went flying everywhere and a really, it, I wouldn't say uncontrolled, but they went all sorts of different places. If we were in like a building or whatever, again, that right there would re represent an extreme fire hazard. So this is where, again, you need to make sure you understand the products that you're using and what its capabilities, limitations, and dangers are also. So now let's move on to the command directed one. All right, so next up is gonna be our command detonated ones. This right here, we're just gonna set it on the ground. This would normally be employed, you'd slide it underneath a cell door or underneath a, a room door or something like that. And you'd set it off with a, either with a battery, we're gonna be using a blasting machine because that's a safer technique. Doing it with a battery is a technique, yeah, but it's a little bit, how do we say that? A ghetto to do that. So what we'll do is we're gonna hook it up to the blasting machine, set it off and show y'all what it does. All right, though. Arnold. All right, so we're gonna do now, we're gonna take the blast strip and we're gonna show his potential here for light breaching. Now, um, this is not a very good demonstration, but this is just the cheapest door we could get from Home Depot at a cheap rate. This is not gonna be an, a, a thing where we're gonna show its real potential. This is gonna be really easy for it to open. This is just a show of how it's done. And um, I've used these right here on doors in RVs they'll open up in light residential, but this isn't something that like Odd Job and um, Auric Goldfinger are gonna use to go open up Fort Knox to go steal all the gold. It's something that where if you're gonna be using this, you wanna make sure that you practice on a bunch of different types of doors so you understand what its capabilities and limitations are. But let's go ahead and take the blast strip. We're gonna put it in here with an IV bag uh, to, to push all the energy towards the door. We'll slap it on here and hit it and we'll show that it can actually open up the door. Find the hole. Well, that wiped out the door. Find the hole. Well, that didn't exactly go according to plan. Um, we learned our lesson on using really crappy doors. Normally we'll get an external door. This is an internal door. Um, usually what happens is that it'll uh, push it open and then the door will still be intact. In but we got an interior door and didn't quite calculate how much the difference of power is. So we totally annihilated the door. But again, I wanna make sure that we're clear. This right here was not designed as a thing of what all it can't, what, what types of doors it can break down. This is to show how it could be employed. Um, the actual doors that it will break open are gonna be again, the light residential doors and RVs, things like that. But it's not gonna be breaking into crack houses that are, you know, fortified with steel doors and whatnot. But hopefully this communicates some capabilities of that or the potential uses of um, the blast trip. So let's go ahead and move on now to the sting ball grenades. Our final weapon is gonna be the ALS sting ball grenade. This right here is typically employed for a crowd control scenario or for like throwing into a room, cell extractions and whatnot. Like I said before, what's gonna happen is whenever it uh, gets thrown, the spoon will come off and right before it detonates the spoon the uh, fuse head right here is gonna pop off and then it's gonna blow up and send 68 caliber balls flying everywhere. So you get the fragmentation effect of the balls coming at you. You also get the bang effect of it being, a, it's a little bit quieter than one of the bangs, but it's still not something you wanna have going off in a room next to you. These are here also available with OC, but we're only gonna be throwing one of the standard ones. All right, let's see what happens. Run the hole. Hold. 
All right, well, that right there shows some of the unpredictable nature of it. I threw it around the corner and it actually rolled back towards me before it detonated. And this fuse head jumped off right before that the whole thing detonated, went flying off uh, towards the building. And then it sent these uh, size balls here. We'll put a picture of them up there. But again, this right here is to demonstrate that a lot of the stuff here is, it's a very useful weapon. These less lethal items, such as uh, noise flash distraction devices, bangs, and these sting balls, but they also have limitations that you have to be aware of and dangers that if you don't understand those whenever you're employing them, they can actually be, <laughs> they can be pretty bad for you or the folks around you that you don't want to screw up. So anyways, hopefully y'all found this video interesting. Again, if y'all are interested, if you're like a law enforcement entity that wants to acquire some of these bangs, please look us up the Macaulay Group. We'll have a link for that in the comments. We want to thank our sponsor, Global Ordinance, for this. Please look in the comment section also for a link where if you can patronize them, you'll be supporting us. Remember us on Patreon, PayPal, and all the other ways of supporting us. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordinance Lab.